that's a reference photo for today's demo uh, it kind of looks good as it is so I don't need to make any changes to it as such so as usual I'll spray some water on the paper to get things going the sky in the photo looks bright blue but I remember on location it was much warmer than that so I'm kind of mixing a purplish blue to uh, paint the sky so I'm adding ultramarine blue a bit of quinacridine rose and maybe a bit of burnt sienna as well to get that uh, uh, purplish blue Because I have sprayed some water on the paper, I'm able to uh, move the brush smoothly over the surface uh, to get that soft looking sky. Next I mix a bit of lemon yellow with the cobalt blue teal to come up with that uh, saturated green that I'm going to use next. And I add a bit of uh, raw sienna as well. What I do next is just mute that green a bit more as well uh, by using maybe a bit of uh, lavender and then use that for the background or rather the green that is further away from us before making it more saturated as we move towards the foreground so that's the muted green that I'm using now it's it's the same green that I mixed earlier with a bit of lavender added to it Just add a bit of clean water before adding the saturated green. trying to leave a few white sparkles on the paper uh, by dragging the brush across the paper in a fast motion I'm able to achieve that and I've got a nice white sparkle on a good spot on the left and I need to be careful to just leave it as it is for the moment Next I mix a bit of uh, cobalt blue with a bit of brown uh, burnt sienna and burnt amber to put in that uh, distant mountains. Uh, the surface is pretty wet so I'm kind of getting a soft edge which will serve my purpose. Next I'm going to uh, just mix a bit of pale blue to put in the first wash for the barn or the farmhouse just to remove the whiteness of the paper. Now it's time to mix some uh, darker greens. I use turquoise blue, a bit of cadmium orange and a bit of uh, Burn sienna.
So if you look closely at the reference photo, these are the parts of the, the trees that are catching some light. Uh, the light is falling on the landscape from left to right. So I, I darken a few spots as well. And I try to make sure that I get the shape of the tree going in a way that 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 denotes that the light is falling from the left to the right. Next I'm going to focus on painting the tree that is closer to us. It kind of has a dark areas as well as lighter areas. So I mix the darks by using turquoise blue, burnt sienna and cadmium orange. And then I mix the lighter bits using cadmium orange, a bit of lemon yellow and cobalt blue tea. I keep both of them ready before starting. So I start off with the lighter bits. Uh, I kind of use the side of the brush to get kind of a round shape going in the tree. The lighter bits are still wet. Uh, I'm going to put in the darks next. Just remove a bit of uh, excess green there before putting in the dark. Uh, the darker green and the lighter green are kind of mixing on paper. And creating a nice kind of a blended green. And I use a Swiss Army knife to just remove a bit, a bit of paint to create an illusion of branches. Mm, to be honest, I'm not really happy with how the tree has uh, turned up. Uh, the colors have blended nicely, but the shape of the tree doesn't look that good. But yeah, that's watercolor. We cannot do much. So I'll just dry the painting completely and move on to the next parts of the painting. So now I'm going to mix a much darker green uh, to put in the trees that's surrounding the barn or the farmhouse. Mm. So this is the focal point in my painting. So this green has to be darker than the green, the trees that we put in earlier. First I'm painting the parts of the tree that's well lit. And I'm trying to make sure that I get the shape of the tree correctly. So now I have put in the lighter areas of the tree and I move to the darker bits. The lighter areas are still wet. They are blending with each other. This tree is tonally much darker than the tree that the large tree that we put on the right hand end of the painting. I try to be as neat as possible to leave space for the building structure that we have over there. And I kind of like the shape that I have achieved. It looks nice. It looks 
much better compared to the tree that we painted earlier. And I make use of the dark that we mixed to add a few more bits of green in the rest of the painting as well. So it kind of creates a balance. Now it's time for the knife to remove a few bits to create a few branches. So one thing that I notice at the moment is that uh, yes, that's the focal area and I need a lot of contrast there. But the contrast that I against the barn is it's a bit too much. So further down, I need to do something to just reduce that contrast a bit more. Just a bit more darkness into the tree on the right as well. I don't want to overdo it, just a few bits. Uh, well, let's see whether it makes things better. I make use of the leftover bits of uh, grey that was there in the palette from mixing the greens and other stuff that we used earlier to put in the shaded areas in the man-made structures in our painting. Next time I'm going to use a bit of uh, leftover green to put in a few dark bits in the foreground. And once that is done, I'll make use of a hake brush and kind of mix a diluted green with the same uh, pigments that I used earlier, just to denote a bit more grass and shrubs in the foreground, which will help to lead our eye into the painting. I try and uh, make use of some leftover greys to put in the shaded areas of the barn next. Once that is done, I'll just have a look and see whether the contrast is nice over there in the focal area. I'm quite happy with it. I'm just putting a few bits and pieces to create kind of an illusion of sheep over there. So I'm not painting any particular sheep for that matter. I'm just adding a few small straight lines 
which will kind of read as sheep from a distance. Next, I make use of uh, some cadmium yellow deep to put in a few yellow flowers. It just kind of uh, blended with the wet bush that was already there. It doesn't really matter. A few details on the tracks to denote a few features and I darken a few areas of the barn as well using the same brown and I try to put in a few stems to the flowers using the brush as well as the knife so these are just kind of uh, enhancements that I to towards the end of the painting uh, it doesn't really uh, improve the composition or anything for that matter it's just a few details that's it so it's time to remove the tape around it and reveal the white edge so it's just a simple country scene that we painted today and we didn't really make any changes to the composition we just followed what it how it was from the reference photo I'll just darken that particular area of the grass so that the tree on the right doesn't stand apart from the rest of the painting and I'll just balance it off in the rest of the grass as well So, hope you enjoyed this particular demo. Uh, just give it a go by yourselves and see how it goes. And please do subscribe to my channel for more demos in the future and uh, beginner's lessons as well. Hope to see you in another video. Happy painting. Till then. Bye.